Okay, today I've got a little 14 inch, this is a GE made by RCA TV. As you can see, we have some uh, a problem at the top of the screen. We have retrace lines. I'm holding my hand in front of the picture, obviously, so that uh, I don't get a content ID match because I'm just uh, filming some stuff off TV here. But uh, as you can see, we have some severe lines at the top of the screen. I'm just going to change the channel here. And it's not as visible on some of my own production work here. If you look at, uh, for example, I can see it on my security cameras here a bit at the top. Right, we have a vertical fold over um, problem on this set. So this is going to be in the, the vertical sweep circuit. And uh, we'll need to use a scope probably on this one. Hopefully this old Hewlett Packard scope that I've got here is going to be sufficient because I still haven't replaced my scope. But uh, let's uh, take a look at this set. I'm just going to get the back off this thing here and we'll start probing around in the vertical circuit and see if we can find the problem with this one. It should be relatively straightforward. I'm thinking it's probably going to be a capacitor that's gone bad, but until we get the back off it, it's hard to tell. It could be, it could even be a broken connection, but more than likely it's a capacitor in the vertical sweep circuit. Okay, I've got the back off the set. We'll examine some of the circuitry here. I'll show you uh, where the different circuits are. The vertical circuit on a set like this is going to be right down in this area down here. I believe that's where the vertical output IC is. Yes, the vertical output IC is right here. And how we know that is we can look at the, the leads coming off of the yoke. Okay, we've got uh, two sets of wires coming off the yoke. One of them is a yellow brown wire, which in these ones over here, the set is on, so I'm kind of keeping my fingers away from the high voltage. And I have one hand in my pocket. But if we look on the, on the neck of the picture tube back here, we'll see that we have a yellow and a brown wire here, and a red and a green wire. And typically, how the yokes are wired is the two inner are the vertical and the two outer are the horizontal and if we follow the leads down as they go down to the circuit board we'll see that the the brown and the red wire go down over onto this side down here which is the where the horizontal output transistor is and the yellow and the green wire go right down to this plug down here this is going to be the vertical side i can confirm that by unplugging it and then i'd end up with a straight line across the screen if i was unsure but uh I don't need to. Maybe I'll unplug it just so you guys can see what the symptom would be if we had no vertical sweep at all. As you can see, with the vertical uh, yoke unplugged completely, we're just going to have a bright white line across the screen. And I don't want to leave that going for more than a few seconds because that actually will burn into the phosphorus and leave a permanent dark mark. And as you can see, this TV actually does not have any burning on the screen, not like some of the other ones that I've got. This is one of the ones I found at the side of the road uh, yesterday, so we're gonna take a look and see if we can get this one going. But as I turn the set back around here, you'll see that uh, since I know that this is the vertical circuit, plus the fact that it's probably marked on the board, vertical circuit anyway, but um, let's get the circuit board out. First of all, I'm going to bang around and see whether there's anything loose on the board. So I'm just going to plug the yoke back in here so that I don't have a, a straight line across the screen. And I'm just going, to, just going to bang around here and see whether we have any loose connections to start with. So the set is running now. I'll turn it around so you guys can see the screen. And I'm just going to tap and see whether that goes away when I tap on anything. don't seem to see anything happening there. So the next stage of the game is we'll pull the circuit board out and look for, oh, I think I just broke the RF input. <laughs> okay, now we have two problems. I was just gonna give this thing a bit of a pull and I now cause the RF input. This is the, actually the isolation block because it's being a hot chassis. This is the piece that isolates, if you look on the back here, there's an insulator around here too. But if we look on the back here, this is the isolation block right here. 
this is what isolates this connector which is obviously going to be grounded because it's connected to your coaxial line and if you're on cable TV that would be grounded this potting material here this is what insulates this from the rest of the chassis if I put my meter for example on here and I put it in ohms mode or even in diode test mode you'll see that if I measure between the case and here I have continuity but I don't have continuity to there because of this isolation here so this is the isolator this, this section here that I kind of broke oh well it's gonna work so when you have one of these TVs apart it's very important that this plastic insulator goes on because that's the only thing like for example if I were to measure I'm probably going to get continuity between one side of the AC power line and the chassis here so let's just measure and see that uh, I have some continuity there if we go to ohms mode you will see that uh, about 300 ohms is all I'm seeing so obviously if I'm not well I can prove this I'll show you I'll I'm gonna plug this thing in oh, if I plug it into an AC outlet and I and I were, were to reverse the uh, the the AC plug this would become a hot chassis and this would actually have voltage on so let's just do that just so you guys can see okay I've got the TV now it's plugged into my my current limiting bulb because the other side of this plug does not have a polarized plug on it if I where's the plug for it it's plugged straight in here okay this does not have a polarized plug so I can plug this in either way so as you can see the TV is on we're drawing some current if I take my meter in AC voltage mode and I connect one side to the ground obviously if I were to hang on to this ground and touch that TV I'm going to get a good shock because I'm hanging on to ground so I'm not going to touch the chassis but I will measure it and you will see that there is actually 48 volts AC between the actual tuner ground or the main chassis ground and the ground here which is my cable TV feed which probably isn't even grounded in the house actually I guess it is because it's connected to some modulators which are grounded right but there's 48 volts now if I reverse the plug put it the other way I've now got 77 volts 78 volts between ground and this and if I were to drop this line onto there we'd have probably have major sparks right now right 77 volts but if I take that plug and I now plug it into my isolation transformer down here and let the TV come back on okay, it's floating but we have no current because I'm isolated if I take this lead here and touch it no sparks right no sparks if I were to do that with it plugged into the line uh, we'd have major sparks but the isolation transformer uh, the, the meter is very high impedance so it, it'll measure you know about 20 volts or so but if I were to touch this I wouldn't get a shock there we go Neil because we are isolated even if I reverse it we're still isolated so I'm just going to reattach the lug that broke off here on the isolator from the, the, the tuner chassis. It was just soldered on and it's not soldered on that well. There, that'll hold it. Okay, let's pull the chassis out on this and uh, see where the vertical problem is. Now these Thompson chassis, you actually have to disconnect things like the speaker lead and the degaussing uh, coil, and I think I even have to, I even have to disconnect the yoke 
the two leads for the yoke to uh, be able to actually remove the chassis. The chassis will just slide out. But now once the chassis is out, I can turn it over and I can reconnect my yoke leads, sort of, so that I can test it while it's uh, on the bench. The problem with a lot of these small TVs is that they didn't make the leads very long and uh, they became kind of a problem when the servicer had to work on them and you needed to make any measurements while the set was running. It became a pain. But uh, anyway, uh, there we get the board out. And I'm just going to study the board here. Uh, this looks to be, this is going to be where the vertical, actually it says vertical right here. Uh, it's the vertical output I see. And I can almost see the problem right now. I think we've got a, I think we've got a connection that's no good here. I'm looking down at pin number seven. Sometimes all you got to do is inspect and you'll find things. Damn, that just looks cracked there. It doesn't look like they've got any solder on here at all. Let me get a close-up of that for you guys. Okay, where are we looking here? Uh, right here. Uh, that pin right there. It's cracked all the way around. I think that might be the problem with this one. Let's uh, just resolve that. I was hoping I was going to get in there with the scope, but um, it doesn't look like that may be the case on this one. It may just be that that connection is all good. also a little piece of wire here that I just noticed right here can you see it it's a little piece of wire right there by my fingernail if I move it you're probably gonna see it drop off see that there it is it's just lying free on the board yeah this TV worked for how many years let's uh Let's just put the board back in on this thing before I go any further. Let's just plug it in and see whether it actually does anything because that may be the only fault with this set. Wouldn't that be interesting? Power it up, turn it on, and we got nice snow. Okay, let's just change that channel and uh, see if the lines return. It was uh, the broadcast channel. No, no lines. Don't want to get a, a strike, but there it is. The, the problem with the lines are gone. And uh, that was it. It was just a, a connection that wasn't soldered properly at the factory and it had severed. Usually those type you can bang on them and they'll, they'll reattach, right? But uh, this one here, uh, it didn't. Uh, that's it. Hope you enjoyed this video. We'll catch you in the next one. Bye for now.